Hello, I'm Pastor Amy Angabus, Bishop's Associate for the East Central Synod of Wisconsin. On behalf of Bishop Ann Edison Albright and the entire Synod staff, welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us today to worship our amazing God. We have a God who chose not to be off in the distance, but to be Emmanuel, God with us. We celebrate the birth of Jesus, God's son, the Prince of Peace. Jesus may have been born many centuries ago, but by the power of the Spirit, Jesus still comes to each of us every single day to bring light and love, hope and peace. We pray that the Spirit will rest upon you and within you as we worship God together. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus, the bright morning star, shines light in the world. By day and night, he shines for all to see. Jesus was born in the midst of injustice and poverty, that the world may see the justice and richness of God. God so loved the world that God sent Jesus so that all who believe in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of our lives. Sing to God a new song, a song of hope, joy, and peace around the world. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 61, verse 10 through 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. 
the nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. A reading from Galatians 4, verses 4 to 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I've always loved the story about Jesus's presentation at the temple because the story of Mary and Joseph and Jesus meeting elders Simeon and Anna feels so familiar. It's a story that's deeply rooted in the Jewish temple practices of a particular time and a particular place and very particular people. But I also can't help but feel the connections to every single time someone has brought a baby into a place of worship. Seriously, I have all the feels when I think of those moments and poignantly how those moments have been missing in our lives since March. 
In times when we aren't in a pandemic, church is an incredibly unique opportunity for people of different generations who aren't related to each other to interact and build genuine relationships of care, friendship, and trust. Through these intergenerational connections, we get glimpses of God's deep and abiding peace. The peace of God is a deep and powerful thing. We learn about God's peace in Scripture, particularly in the Gospel according to John, when Jesus is getting the disciples ready for his death and resurrection, distinguishing between the peace he gives and the world's peace, and also in his appearances after the resurrection, too. Jeremiah and Ezekiel both warn against false prophets who talk of peace where there is no peace. True peace, God's peace, is not superficial and does not try to cover up or condone oppression. God's peace is not used in an authoritarian way either to force silence when people are crying out in need or in pain. The world's peace can be coercive in this way. God's peace is not. God's peace is liberating. You can hear it in the words of Simeon's song, the sense of liberation, of release, of freedom. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for your revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. We sing a version of this prayer called the Nunc Dimittis as part of Compline, the service of daily prayer sung right before going to bed at night. It is also read sometimes at funerals, and there's this sense embedded into the prayer of the deep, liberating peace that comes from an encounter with the gospel, from meeting face to face either at the end of a long life like Simeon's or Anna's, or at the end of a long day, God's grace and love for all creation embodied in Jesus Christ. This prayer puts into words that sense of release and relief, letting go of all fear and doubt and striving to attain our own salvation. God's salvation has been prepared in the presence of all peoples for all to see. Again, this text feels particularly poignant. A funeral text at a time when there are more deaths and thus more need for funerals than usual, but also necessarily more restrictions on funerals and funeral gatherings. It is important to name, too, that the difference between God's peace and the world's peace has been evident in the way that elders and other populations more vulnerable to COVID-19 have been treated over the course of the pandemic. The world may, in some cases, be at peace with elders dying at high rates from the virus, and may even suggest that th these deaths mean less. This is false prophecy, just another way of saying peace where there is no peace. The peace of God does not devalue the lives of elders. The peace of God does not look away from or contribute to the oppression that leads to higher COVID deaths among Black and Latino people. The peace of God is not death. It is salvation 
freedom from the fear and power of death in all of its forms. When the faithful elders in the temple meet the couple and their infant son, they recognize that he is the incarnation of that freedom, that peace. Death is all around the edges of their conversation. You can feel it. It's in the revelation of the Holy Spirit to Simeon. It's in Anna's long life as a widow. It's in Simeon's message to Mary. And a sword will pierce your own soul, too. The power and the presence of death is everywhere, all around them, just as it seems to be around us now. And yet right in the middle of that death-filled reality is an even more powerful reality. God's peace and love. God's grace in human form. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ. The peace of God is revealed in this meeting in the temple through the infant Jesus, of course, but also through the prophets, the elders, Anna and Simeon, and in their interaction with the parents and baby. They not only receive God's peace and bear witness to God's peace, they are themselves embodied messengers of that peace. They give the gift of God's peace to others in the temple. And even to us, so many years and languages and continents away. I asked on the Bishop's blog on the Synod website for folks to share stories of times that you experienced the peace of God through an interaction with an elder. Pastor Sharon Fox Bogan, who serves Zion Lutheran Church in Tigerton and Redeemer in Wittenberg, shared an experience from a weekend shift as an on-call hospital chaplain. Pastor Sharon responded to a call to pray with a patient coming out of surgery. It was near the end of the day and she was feeling tired and worn down. Also, she and the nurses wondered a bit if the patient was really ready enough for prayer, having just recently come out of surgery. But the patient was really grateful for company, and Pastor Sharon found that she was too. Pastor Sharon writes, I was so moved by the patient's words asking God to be able to accept whatever diagnosis and health needs were ahead of her. Her faith and trust in the God I preach so often strengthened my whole being, healed me, made me know God's love was present and alive in this tiny moment. So freeing not to have politics, pandemic, or denomination divide us. So true to have suffering's vulnerability make strangers one. Love surrounded the patient and the weary pastor. This encounter makes clear what we've begun to guess from the encounter of the Holy Family and the elder prophets in the temple. The peace of God shared between people in holy moments like these is an experience of mutual blessing, grace, and liberation. We are strengthened and renewed, not by our own strength, not by the strength of others, but because in mutual vulnerability and suffering, we meet Jesus Christ. God, who is revealed as an infant born in difficult conditions, a child forced to live as a refugee and an exile, an unhoused person who eats with outcasts, a criminal who is publicly executed on a cross. This is the God who is with us and all creation, who is true and deep peace in the midst of all suffering. 
Love and peace surrounds the elders, the youth, all who are weary and yearning for some rest and renewal. For peace that is real and trustworthy and true. My prayer is that even in these days when we aren't gathering in person, God's peace will find you. I trust that God's peace has and will find you in the midst of this pandemic, because that's what God does. God shows up in the last place you'd expect an all-powerful deity to be. God shows up in the places of most suffering, vulnerability, and exhaustion. In places where it seems like death might have the final say. Like Simeon, we've seen Jesus. So we know and trust, even when it's impossible to believe on our own, death doesn't have the final say. Salvation has been revealed to all people. And with people across many generations, we pray, Lord, give us your peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Sending God, make us agents of your transforming power and heralds of your reign of justice and peace that all may share in the healing Christ brings. Empowered by your spirit, grant us the courage we need to journey, trust, listen, speak, and accept your commission to be your faithful servant people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your glory is shown forth in all the marvels of your creation. Teach us to enjoy creation's beauty and show us ways to be caretakers of these wonders you have entrusted to us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, your Son came as the Prince of Peace and brought a message of peace for all people. Help us to be peacemakers in our homes, at our work, in our schools, and wherever we meet people, so that the peace and goodwill of Christmas can find a place in the hearts of all people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, there are so many who are suffering in this world, suffering from discrimination, oppression, and violence. Make us agents of mercy and justice, finding ways to make Christ known to those who are desperate for a word of hope. Give us courage to stand with those who are treated unfairly and work for equality and fair treatment for all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, we pray for friends and family who are ill and remember them in the quietness of our hearts. We bring these people to you in the confidence that you love them and know their every need. Bless all that is being done for their recovery, granting wisdom and skill to all those who care for them. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Mighty God, we thank you for the generations of your faithful people who have passed along their faith to us, shining your light into our lives. Fill us with your spirit that we may share our faith and hope in you with others, that you may work through us to draw people close to you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers spoken and unspoken and give to us all that we need to live out our days as faithful and sent disciples 
In the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, now and forever. Amen. together in 2020 has been challenging in many ways. And the congregations of the East Central Synod of Wisconsin and other ministry contexts too have adapted to those challenges with creativity and grace. From outdoor worship with FM transmitters to online services using recordings from sanctuaries and homes, these changes have called on extraordinary efforts from volunteers and staff, along with many unanticipated expenses. We invite you in this Christmas season and at year-end gift-giving time to give generously to your congregations and congregation leaders. We encourage both generous financial support as well as the gift of affirmation 
and thanks to pastors, deacons, congregation staff, council members, and other leaders in your context. Your generous support and kindness go a long way. Thank you. And thank you for all the ways you are the church, as we are church together.